Hey, this is Dominique from Neek Films, and today I'm gonna to be walking you through my workflow for editing dance videos. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like this video, and let me know if there's anything that you learned as we go through it in the comment section. Today I'm editing in Adobe Premiere 2020, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I've already done some of the steps, um, just kind of my basic steps, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through them. We had six different shots, including the drone, but I hadn't, haven't added the drone in. That's really the last thing I do. The first thing I do is sync it up with the song. So you download the song and you sync it up. And then you know, a lot of times when I'm editing, I make sure that I'm editing on fourth of quality because it just helps with the uh, speed a lot faster. See how I don't have everything lined up space for space? What I do is I will make every other lane or layer not visible. So every other layer is not visible. So I'll watch every take over and I'll take the best shots and I'll put it up on the scene. And then after I get all of those done, all those layers done, then I will start chopping it up and using which ones I have. So I have all the choices of the best ones lined up already. This shot is the one of my close-ups, one of the close-ups of the dancer. So it's not getting all of them. It's mostly getting him in the middle. Uh, and this one was the one of the 4K shots. The 4K is great for um, the close-ups, honestly. And you would think it would be the opposite way around because it's like, okay, 4K wide shots, it would be better, um, which it is good, uh, but my camera crops. So when I want like a super wide lens look, a lot of times I have that in the dance videos. I can't get that exact look when I'm in 4K mode. So I do it in just regular HD. For the close-ups, like the detail on it is incredible. I only want, really want to use out of all, that close-up, this shot because I think it's a nice cut in. So that's what I did there. And I went through the entire, that entire close up clip, which is this one. And sometimes I color coat them, so we could do that. Um, and a lot of times I associate the color with whatever is going on. So I'm gonna do his orange, do they have orange mango? Um, because he stands out from the rest of them. Okay, so you can see where I stopped. I got like a third into it to choose the best shots of this one. The One of the third things that I do, on the wides, I'll add the digital zooms in there, dolly zoom effects. I call it the Alfred Hitchcock move because that's he made that famous. But the basically vertigo. I shoot my music video specifically or dance video specifically so I could do this move. You see all these markers here. I go in and I create the moves that I want. So let me show you what it looks like without any of this. So I'm gonna do this, this, take all of these away. This is what the shot looks like without any of my digital zooms or anything like that. I mean, you know, it's movement. And this is what it looks like after. So I'm doing these zooms in. And these have no uh, like vibration effects or anything that I do that way later. These are just to keep all the people in frame so when I go far back, it does that cool effect in the background. So you can see where all of my keyframes are at. And for uh, dance videos, I don't do a lot of eases. I just don't think it's necessary for dance videos. It's kind of nice to have it like a little sharp. We really, I think this was the first one we did. Usually with the first take we do, I don't really use it because pe people think that they're into it and then they do the next one and it's like, okay, they, that was a lot better. With any dance that you're filming, there, especially with groups though, there are key points that you need to get the perfect shot, the right shot for that part of the dance. So I know that there was at least twice that I really was happy with the way that I captured their like drop down. So this one is not one that I like it unless I do a like zoom down with them and I could 
And if I end up liking that better than what I, what any of my other shots are, I'll do that. So I'll show you what I mean. They start moving right about there. So I grab that and I put a keyframe in position and scale. And I, right when they hit it, right at the end, I zoom down with them. so that they're completely and I will make it go in the middle of the frame. So I do that and then make sure, okay, so here it like starts to move, the camera moves, but I wanna keep him in the center. So I do this and then let's do this and click that. I'm gonna go 100% in. I had popcorn earlier, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like. So here he starts to get out of frame, so I'm gonna go back out to 50%. Let's see what the close-up looked like. Yeah, see, that's so much better right there. I'm gonna keep going down. I'm gonna mute this track so I could just focus on this. And something about dance videos, a lot of videographers, and this is something that I've learned, is that you can't uh, just edit to video. You have to edit to the dance. Basically, at the end of the day, if you think a shot is really dope, but the dancer messed up or it doesn't look, they weren't hitting it as good. The dancer's not gonna like it and they're gonna wanna change. So you have to um, really edit to the dance and make sure that everybody in there is doing exactly what, um, you know, they need to be. It, sometimes if it's like a tiny mess up at the back, like you don't really see it, but you know, you wanna make sure that you're not just editing to your shots. It's important. You definitely need to have like musical abilities. Um, like you need to understand music. Just as a dancer understands music, you need to understand as an editor. I've seen some horrible dance videos. Editor, I'm like, do you even listen, bro? Do you listen to music? Another important part is when the kids run in, we gotta find like the best shot for that because that's a super dope part. Yeah, see there, lost it. I did not see them in that shot. So that will not be going into the the like pile. I think that I got it really good on a wide shot. Like you could really tell what was going on. Oh, they were struggling. Yeah, that's why we, I'm just gonna do this cause I don't even wanna trick myself to go back over there. So there was a little bit offness of some of the dips yeah that could have been a lot cleaner but i just want to go through and pick out the best of the dancing where i think it's going to fit best we've already done two of these let's name these colors because we didn't do that yet the crazy part is we don't even have the drone in yet so it's not bad let's look at the next one yeah, no, we're, we got a little sloppiness going on here. I think it's right over here in the children area. Yeah. So I'm just picking the best in that spot, the best, and I'm looking at it compared to the other shots that I've already selected so that I can get the best one. There's nothing there, not one shot there that I liked. It happens sometimes. Oh, snap. Obviously, we've still got work to do. This is the time to add the drone. This, we need to ingest it because that buddy is gonna be strong. Ingest, we want to create a proxy. Same as project. Usually with dancers, you can trust their, boom, their timing. So that's exactly when their feet are like straight up on the ground. 
So that's when we're going to go here and we find that exact same spot. There we go, right there. And then we pick out the best spots of these. Now this is like almost go time. We're starting to fine tune things down to what the actual edit is gonna be. So, you know, it's a process. You just have to go through it. You also wanna make sure that when you're editing, you're not distracting from the dance. And that's a big mistake that I see a lot of video videographers do is that when they're editing, they're doing all these crazy flashes, but you don't actually see the choreography. And I think that it really takes away from the talent of the dancers to get covered up with a ton of uh, cuts. So that's my opinion. Here I'm just comparing all of the shots that I've chosen. The ones that are colored are the ones that I think are good shots and are in competition to be in the final edit. It's just a lot of going back and forth between which shots I wanna use in that particular spot, especially if there's multiple shots that I've chosen for that spot. We have a basic edit. This is a point where I watch it through, then I will render it, and then I'll watch it through again, and then we'll keep going. My next step is to do all of the vibrations and jitter effects and stuff like that um, on top of all the video since I have basically my edit down. So anytime I want to put, um, you know, on the bass drop or maybe the high hat hit um, or, you know, the, or the trap hit, um, you know, I just add basically whatever I feel like, you know, there's no formula. just go with what you want to do. Here I'm adding masks and different jitter effects and vibration effects. I will be doing a specific tutorial on these effects and how I edit special effects. And there are tons of variations of the types of effects that I use. So once I feel like I have a basic edit down with the effects, with the um, just kind of the basic effects, I will render it, watch it through, and make sure there's no parts that I feel like needs extra oomph in or extra vibration or any kind of jitter effects. So I just watched it. I saw a few spots that I kind of want to fix. Okay, so I fixed the things that I saw that were needing to be fixed. So then uh, my next step is to basically create the beginning and the end, and that is done through a different B-roll that I already got. Um, so that's gonna be my next step, getting that all together. I'm gonna go ahead and edit the beginning and end, and I will do that off camera. After that step is the color grading step, and so that's an entirely different thing in itself. So I'm not gonna go in depth on this. I do have a color grading uh, tutorial, but I will be doing another tutorial on color grading. This video and another video I actually did for Lucius Thomas Squad. And when that's all said and done, all that's left to do is fine tune, fine tune, fine tune. Going back over and over and over again, watching it over and over and over again, making sure there's no spots that could be better, um, something added, something taken away, uh, to make sure you are seeing the dance for what it is, but also adding to it with your videography, not just it being about the video and the effects. It needs to work together with the dancing. Um, that's the most important part uh, about videoing with dancers. Um, and they're gonna appreciate it as well that you're looking out for them and not just you. That's a big skill videographers can learn when working with dancers. After I finished this edit, I actually thought that it needed just a little bit more. So I ended up doing some animations on this video and you'll be able to see those in the final edit. I did those edits in After Effects. I won't be showing you how I did that in this video though. If you haven't seen this finished video yet, I'll put the link in the description and go ahead and subscribe to my channel to see more video tutorials on how to edit, how to color grade, how to plan a shoot, how to shoot a music video, how to shoot dance videos, all that kind of stuff. Make sure to comment something that you liked or maybe that you learned that you didn't know before. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.